Thank you very much. Um, so, <laughs> in the mid-1980s, when the teenage me was sat at his desk at school, I was given a form. And printed at the top of the form block letters were the words Jig Cal. Not actually even words. Jig Cal, job, idea, information, generator, computer, aided learning. The idea was simple. I would fill out the form. I would tell the form my likes, my dislikes, my hobbies, my interests, my academic strengths and weaknesses. The form would then be sent away to a computer in Oxford, which would then tell me my ideal job. So we all sat there, we filled out the forms, we gave them to our teacher, we forgot about them until a couple of weeks later, a small brown envelope was dropped onto my desk in front of me, inside of which was my mathematically perfect job. Funeral director. <laughs> True story. Now, strangely, I had never dreamt of being a funeral director. I'm sure some people do, I had not. Um, but it was okay that there was something I had dreamt of being. I knew what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to be a gentleman juggler. Okay, let's backtrack. Um, two years earlier, I'm on holiday with my parents and I see a man doing a show. And he's a juggler and he's funny and I become his biggest fan. I go to every single show, I sit in the front row, I love him. And then, after a few days, or a week and a half, I start to realise maybe I don't want to be his biggest fan. Maybe I want to be him. So the moment I get back home from our holiday, I go to the pet shop at the end of our street and I buy three rubber dog balls. And I start teaching myself to juggle. And at the same time, I start teaching myself about the history of my newfound art form. I start learning about all the different kinds of juggler that existed back in the heyday of music hall and variety. And it's true to say that back then there were as many different kinds of juggler as these days there were different kinds of singer or comedian. There were clown jugglers, comedy jugglers, sports jugglers, military jugglers, salon jugglers, restaurant jugglers, foot jugglers. But the ones that caught my eye were the gentlemen jugglers. Cool, dapper playboys who performed feats of dexterity with the kinds of objects that a gentleman of the time might encounter on a night out. So, hats and canes, bottles and glasses, um, oh, <laughs> fully laden dining tables. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to be a professional juggler and I did not tell my parents. They assumed it was a silly phase, just a hobby. I carried on working hard at school, but I knew that I wanted to be a juggler. I went to college, I studied child psychology, but still, I wanted to be a juggler. When I finally left college, I told my parents what I wanted to do with my life, and they were, and continue to be, less than thrilled. <laughs> I signed on the dole. I claimed unemployment benefit, and for six months, I lied about looking for work. I was not looking for work. But I was learning a trade. Every morning, I would get up, I would jump on my unicycle and cycle down to the local park, find a secluded corner and practice my tricks until it got dark. Then I would hop back on the unicycle and ride home. And as I rode home, I would ponder the question that had begun to haunt me. Where, in the late 1980s, does a juggler work? I mean, all the music halls and variety theatres had long since closed. Uh, light entertainment was being kicked out the back door by the hot young upstarts of alternative comedy. Circuses were as unfashionable as they would ever be. It wouldn't matter how good I might get. If there was nowhere for me to work, I was doomed. It was a Sunday afternoon in a South London sports centre, a place where once a week jugglers would gather to share tricks and hang out. My friend Dave, another juggler, he mentioned to me that Covent Garden Market in the West End, just across the street in fact, were holding auditions. And if you passed the audition, you would get a busking licence. 
which meant you could do shows on the street. I was there first thing Monday morning, standing under the portico of St Paul's Church, West Piazza, Covent Garden, prop bag in hand. I strode out onto the cobblestones in front of a handful of disinterested tourists and the suspicious gazes of the other performers, and I did something vaguely approximating a show. I made 16 pounds, but more importantly, I passed my audition. I got my busking license, and that was it. There was no going back. I'd been accepted into a secret club that I have never left. I had found my family. An international community of professional street performers, hustlers and pirates, ladies and gentlemen. People who had travelled the same road as me without an idea burning in their hearts that had led them to the streets, the cobblestones, the piazzas, the new variety theatres. Escapologists, breakdancers, magicians, acrobats and jugglers all sharing a pitch, working hard to make a modest living and hone their craft, battling the drizzle, the French school parties, the drunks, in pursuit of a round of applause, a big laugh and some money in the hat. I worked hard, and while I worked, I continued to learn more about the history of my art form. I started to really enjoy the idea of being part of a lineage of performers. I started to see part of my job as to be to, to find something old and forgotten about, to blow the dust off it, give it a shine, give it a twist, show people, and then pass it along to the next performer to come along. Because the language of circus is passed down through members of often unrelated families. Let me explain. This is a cigar box. These are called cigar boxes because they are boxes in which you put cigars. Am I losing anybody? <laughs> They're just empty wooden boxes and jugglers do tricks with them. And the reason that jugglers do tricks with them is that a hundred or so years ago, if you were a touring vaudeville performer, whatever town you would roll into, you could go to the cigar store, they would be happy to give you their old thrown out boxes, and if you could do something cool with those boxes, you had free props for life. And jugglers did learn to do something cool with the boxes. Let's uh, take a look. So this is W.C. Fields, the great American comedian, but of course before he was a film star, he was internationally known as a juggler. This is one of my own personal favourites. This guy's called Rebler. 1958, with a very flexible back for an old man. This is Bella Cremo, patriarch of the Cremo Circus dynasty. And there he is performing side by side with his son, Chris Cremo. And then Chris went solo and became one of the biggest stars in circus and is still working today. And then this is the American juggling troupe Air Jazz. And this is when I first saw cigar boxes watching this exact footage on the Paul Daniels magic show on a Saturday night on the BBC. Although I am dressed slightly better. And then that brings us to me doing the same tricks handed down by those performers. Oh. <laughs> like it's, it's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting. I just showed you the exact same tricks you'd already seen several times on the screen, but when you see something live, you feel the urge to clap. There might be a lesson in that somewhere. I'd like to show you one more quick trick, if I may, with the boxes. It's one of my favourite tricks, and it involves eight boxes... It also involves a cigar and a glass of wine, because I am a gentleman juggler. Let's uh, give this a go. You're right to not clap. <laughs> that wasn't the trick. That was the easy part. This is the hard part.
job market had become my office. Five days a week for more than 15 years. I had successfully answered the question, where does a juggler work? But now I had a new question. Where else can a juggler work? I'd paid my dues. It was time to spread my wings and find all the other places that I could do my act. And this time, if those places didn't exist, I would make them happen. Just in the same way that a street performer's pitch is only a street corner until a busker decides to turn it into a theatre. So I found the countries that still had variety circuits. I went and I worked in their theatres. When I came home, there was a resurgence in burlesque, so I helped to make it a revival in cabaret and variety as well. I noticed there were no great big West End theatre variety shows the way they used to be, so I took a gamble, I called in some favours, and I did some filling a West End theatre with the stars of cabaret and street performance alongside some of the, the legends that inspired me to get into this in the first place, people like Paul Daniels. There are no good variety shows on TV, and no, 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 we do not count those TV shiny flawed talent show slaughterhouses. But it's okay because I can make my own, put it on YouTube, get a global audience for free. I started to think like a busker in everything I did. Ignore the gatekeepers, just hustle, find the pitches, work the crowds, make a living and be the artist I always wanted to be. And yes, embrace the madness of being a variety star in a country that doesn't think it has any variety. Because the bottom line is this, ladies and gentlemen, what I do might seem quite complicated, and sometimes it is, but at its heart, it is as simple as it is timeless. My job, my life's work, is to show you something live before your very eyes that you have never seen before. Thank you.